in this morning, and I was uh, thinking about uh, the, less, the message today, and I want to praise the Lord for being patient with me all these years. Man, I was so haughty. And the more I read the Bible and study it and go to the Lord in my new humble attitude, the more I realize how prideful I was and how many people I probably kept out. <sighs> Thank you, Lord, for being patient with me. And so um, this uh, message today in the book of Matthew, we are to the book of Matthew in our preaching through the Bible. And I tell you, I draw different things from the Bible than I used to because of that, uh, a, a new strength that I believe that I've been given. It, it's a conversion is what it is. It's a conversion. And uh, we see that conversion in... Uh, many people throughout the scripture, one in particular would be Peter. You remember how Peter was very rigid in his thoughts and ways and even after <clears throat> he was uh, saved and believed on the Lord, um, Jesus told him one day after he'd said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And uh, Jesus says to him, When thou art converted... Strengthen thy brethren. So even though he believed that this was the Christ and he stuck with him, Jesus knew there was a time coming when he would really have an understanding of what Christianity and Christ-likeness is. Where are you at today? I want to ask that question. As we go through this message, I want you to examine your lives and see if you're still where Peter was at or if you are, have had this new strength come into you, a new realization about what Christian life is like. And I believe it's really a theme that goes throughout the whole of the New Testament. And starting here in Matthew, we could go through and talk about the theology of it, and man, it is deep and neat. I love every bit of it. But what I want to draw from it today is this theme that goes throughout it like this that we really see the culmination of at the very end. Right before Jesus is getting ready to be crucified, he just spells it out. And he does that in each one of the Gospels, if you're looking for that. We went through John's Gospel on Wednesday night uh, sometime back, and it was the same thing. That's the, for some reason, that is what God wants me to focus on right now whether it's because of my own heart and I'm on the right track, but He's still working on me, getting me to that place where I can be of more help to the hurting, or whether it's for you, this town, this community, whatever it may be. Here in the book of Matthew, it has been 400 years of silence. The last prophet spoke, the prophet Malachi, until John the Baptist comes on the scene. And uh, about 50 years after the passion of Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, Matthew, or Levi, as he's called in some of the other Gospels, Gospel of Luke in particular, 50 years after the passion of Christ, he finishes his record of the ministry of Christ. And what makes uh, Matthew special is that he was very hated by the religious for several reasons. He worked for the Romans as a tax collector. You see that in the book of Luke. It, it says that very plainly. You can draw it from here in Matthew, but he doesn't focus on that part. And I don't know if, if you're writing a book, um, if you would want to mention yourself very much in there either. But you can get what he's talking about there in the book of Matthew, but in Luke it's very plain. Levi was a publican. 
And uh, in Matthew, I believe all we see is he was sitting at the seat of custom. But he was hated by the religious. They hated him because the only people that would hang out with him was the other publicans and, and harlots. And so the religious Jews felt they had a good reason to avoid and shame Matthew. And so for personal application, for the sake of personal application, Matthew focused on this problem of looking at others as abominable and showed in many ways how Jesus taught that those abominable will enter heaven before the religious will. Over and over and over again, he says this. If you're not looking for that, you're going to go through Matthew being more built up in your religion because it's written to the Jewish mindset. So there's a lot of religion in it. But the, the focus is always to tear that down, to bring on the new. And still today, Christians take that stuff and use it to be more emboldened, to be more rigid, to be more pushy, and they're missing the whole point. They got to read the rest of the book, so to speak. And uh, for personal application's sake, I want to go through some of these things this morning. Um, you know, religious people only care about religious people. Did you, do you realize that? Be careful because we all tend toward that in our lives. And this is why we need a daily dose of God's Word to keep bringing us back to reality. And so that's not even religion at all. Pure religion and undefiled is this. Can anybody finish that verse for me? And the orphans. Amen. And widows and orphans, we established was who? Anyone lost. They don't have a husband, Christ, and they don't have a father, God. Listen, this is real. Matthew was what the Bible calls a publican. Thankfully, not a republican. <laughs> Thankfully. But I'll tell you, it's in there. We really got to be careful. He was called a publican. And uh, you gain that from Luke chapter 5, verse 27. Look with me at Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. This is where you'll see him talking about himself. You can't tell he's talking about himself. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 9 and verse 9. It says, And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house. And we see in Luke that it's Matthew invited him to his house after this. Behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. Well, that's something. He says, you go and you study that out. Learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Boy, now this is when uh, Matthew first leaves to go with Jesus. It's because of this kind of attitude. He's seen it all. He is hated by the religious. Matthew is because he's a tax collector. Not only did tax collectors come and collect tax for the Roman government, but they were also 
The Roman government did not say, okay, you've collected this much for us, here's your pay out of that. As a tax collector, you decided what your pay was. When you went around to each house, you'd just add a little bit to it. And most tax collectors lived very lavish lifestyles. Very lavish. And so they were hated, they were hated on many fronts because they hung out with publicans and sinners and they were rich. And here Matthew, that's all he's had is religious people to look at. Jesus comes along and he's been watching him. You know he has. He's seen him around. He's heard of him. And Jesus, just by his presence, says to this tax collector that dwells with publicans and sinners all the time, says, follow me. And he just gets up and follows him. says, wait, wait, I want to have a party at my house and I want you to come and be who you are around all the people that I hang out with. Come and be who you are. Oh man, this is real to me this morning. Gosh, when's the last time you held a party so that Jesus could be glorified? When's the last time you decided, I don't care about my clean house, my neatness, I'm going to give it to the Lord today? When's the last time the American mindset is, I don't want nobody messing up my stuff, I like it the way it is, I want to enjoy it. Remember, I'm speaking about myself too. This is me. I have all the authority in the world to yell and scream at you today. (laughs) Because that's me. It's me. Running throughout Matthew's gospel is this theme given in parables teaching that when you separate from publicans and sinners, that you are violating the law more than they are. Because the law that Jesus came to fulfill was the spirit of the law. To love thy neighbor as thyself. Preachers today, they talk about how he kept all the laws perfectly, and I say, no, he didn't. He kept the spirit of the law. If he'd have kept the laws all perfectly, he would have stoned that adulterous woman. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was always about the spirit of the law. Always. Jesus had compassion on the adulterous woman. What do you think he wants you to do? Throw stones? No. He doesn't want that. He wants us to eat with publicans and sinners. He said, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. Learn of me. The religious of the day criticized him for it. We criticize people for it today. Not realizing what we're doing. We've got this mindset of what our religion consists of. And we don't like to get out of the box. And we have good excuses, we think. Look at Matthew chapter 21 real quick. Matthew 21. Oh, I'm so thankful God was patient with me all these years. You know, I was zealous of the law, so to speak. I was zealous of, of it. But, and God used that time to pump this Bible in me. So it wasn't worthless. But man, when it comes to ministry, I was worthless. I was worthless. Matthew chapter 21, look at verse 31. Now this is the uh, parable of the two sons that one said, I don't want to go. I'm not going to do what you say. I'm going to do, go do my own thing. And the other son said, I'm going to do what you say. But then later, he was just hiding it. He was just telling him to appease. 
his father and later on went and done bad. <clears throat> and it says, whether of them twain did the will of his father. Because the other one came back, remember. I forgot to put that in there. The other one came back and did right. But the one that said he was going to do right went and done wrong later. He was just putting on a show. Whether of them twain did the will of his father. They say unto him, the first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. This is the theme that he's trying to put out to these religious. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. This is the Pharisees. This is the religious of the day. They're, they're not satisfied with anything. They had both things going on around them there, and they wasn't satisfied with, with either one. Jesus fulfilled the spirit of the law in balancing that out. The religious of that day and today forget all about the most important part of the law. In Matthew 23, you'll see that you're in 21. Go to Matthew 23 and verse 23. Matthew 23 and verse 23. It says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Judgment, that means righteous judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done the tithing on their stuff. He ought to have done that. That's right. And not to leave the other undone. It's worthless. It's helpless without the weight of your matters, without righteous judgment, mercy, and faith, meaning people can see it in you. Without that, those earlier matters are worthless. They're just religion. He calls them blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Well, there's some imagery for you. You want to be known as somebody like that? Let's go back to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 43. This is during the Sermon on the Mount. Verse 43 says, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say, unto you. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Please pay attention to this. If ye love them that love you, what reward have ye? Roy mentioned loving the unlovely. That's the whole ministry. That's the one that people are going to notice. 
forever and ever because you're going to have crowns because of that. The people that are unloving, maybe the people that despise you and you continue to try to draw them to God. That's the rewards that will be waiting for you. And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Remember how we said Matthew, all he hung out with was publicans and sinners because they were the only people that he got along with. We do the same thing by only hanging out with religious. And it's even more of a transgression on our part because we know the truth. We know what we're supposed to be doing and just won't do it. It's uncomfortable. It gets us out of our comfort zone. It tears things up that we like. Opening up our house for Super Bowl Sunday. Boy, I can tell you, if Lauren was in here, she would attest to it. We first got married, you better not spill nothing. If you spill something, you're going to (laughs) know. Because she's going to get right up and clean it right in front of you. And I tell you what, the Lord has changed her. It's not that way anymore. Oh, it'll be fine. I'll get it later. Believe me, it took a while. Same as it is me. With everything else. See, I can look at her and say, Oh, come on, honey. It's just carpet. You know, she's not happy if there's not vacuum tracks in it. It don't look clean if there ain't vacuum tracks. Anything spills, she's running over there, wiping it up, cleaning it up, follows the kids around all day long. Not as much anymore. I can look at that and say, Oh, man, you need work. All the while, I needed more work than she did. I did. I may have been okay with that because I'm a guy and I like to walk in on the carpet with dirty shoes and everything. I don't want to have to take my shoes off. You know, but I got this whole guy pride thing going on. And you know what? She never ever one time told me, you need work on that. What did she do? She was a very present help to me. I mean, it helped me. I don't know. It's like it sneaks up on you. Oh, man. The way she has been to me is the way we need to be to the lost. Don't point out everything that's wrong with them. Give them what you got. The grace from God. Give them what you got. Did I finish reading this? Matthew 5, 43 through 48. Verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. See, he just defined what being perfect is. Uh, Somebody told me a while ago, I'm not perfect. I think it was Jackson. Is he in here? Yes. He said, I'm not perfect. And I said, thank goodness, none of us are. This is what being perfect is. You are looked at as perfect if you follow these, this Sermon on the Mount, if you follow these sermons. Listen, just don't treat people badly in the name of the Lord. Don't treat people badly. Understand you're not perfect. Make sure everybody else knows that you're not perfect. Don't walk around with your head in the air like you're so special and above everybody else. And you will be considered perfect in the Lord's eyes. That's what that's a perfect man, one that knows where he stands. That's perfect. Be ye therefore perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now we know he's perfect in every way. But listen, what did he do? The Father deserves everything. He deserves everything. The Son that did all that work 
He left his home in heaven, became a man, suffered, bled, and died, shed every bit of his blood for you and me. He deserves everything. But he didn't take everything, did he? He thought of himself of no reputation. He humbled himself all the way to the death of the cross. He felt everything that we feel. He could have said at any moment, I'm done with this. These people, they don't want me. I'm out of here. You know good and well every one of us would have done that. We do it every day. Somebody looks at us wrong. Somebody treats us wrong. I'm done. Beat it. How many times have you done that this week? You're not perfect before the Lord. We can fail, (laughs) have all these problems, if we treat people right. We treat people with this mindset. We are considered perfect. (laughs) This is his message. Look at Matthew chapter 11, and I'll close with this. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 16. He is talking to this generation of religious people. And he says, But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, And they say, he hath a devil. This is John, the Baptist. Does everything right. I mean, he's right down the line. He doesn't eat anything that he shouldn't. I mean, he eats locust and honey out of the wilderness. He is refined. Now, I mean to tell you, he is religious. And they say he has a devil because he preaches against them. Then it says, the Son of Man came eating and drinking. The Son of Man comes and goes into the houses with the publicans and sinners. John wouldn't dare do that. The Son of Man comes, Jesus, eating and drinking, and they say, behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, period. But wisdom is justified of her children. Meaning, watch what fruit came out of Jesus' ministry and what fruit came out of the Pharisees' ministry. It never said they all drew near to the Pharisees. It said they all drew near to Jesus. Matthew sees him one time, drops everything, leaves his, what would you call that? Publicanity <laughs> leaves it to follow Jesus. They, how, who, how many do you think is just waiting, waiting for somebody to really show them Jesus? How many people are just waiting to drop everything, to follow somebody that really actually follows what they say they believe? How many people are waiting for that? A bunch. A bunch. Even atheists. Many atheists have said, if I could see one Christian actually put to work the things they say they believe, I would believe. Boy, that is something to us. These people are just looking for a fight. They're religious. They're not satisfied with anything. They're just... They're just looking for a fight. They're looking for the problems in everything. Nothing pleases them. The only joy they experience is with themselves because everyone else falls short of their perfection and neatness. Heaven forbid someone gets you out of your comfort zone for a minute. That was the religious of the day. And boy, we can fall into that. The American mindset is this way. I mean, America raises us up this way. You worked hard for what you got. Take care of it. Lock it up. 
Oh, and believe me, I do some locking up nowadays. But I don't let it run my life. I don't let it run my life. The religious of that day and the religious of today. Paul said it this way, you have forgotten where you came from. You've forgotten what you were at one time. You were just a sinner. That's all any of us are. If we believe we're just a sinner saved by grace. I'm going to attempt to play that song for our closing today. Page 19. Let us remember we're just a sinner saved by grace. I think if we get that in us, we'll be more of a tool in God's hand. I promise you we will. Stay seated and you just help me. I don't know if this is going to sound right or not. I tried it a little bit up here this morning. I wish that uh, I would have had this heart on this song on my heart sooner. But uh, it is what it is. Sinner saved by grace. Who knows this song? You help me if I do anything wrong, okay? Sing loud. If you could see what I once was, if you could go with me back to where I started from, then I know you would see the miracle of love that took me in its sweet embrace and made me what I am today a sinner saved by grace I'm just a sinner saved by grace when I stood condemned to death he took my place ain't you happy about that now I grow and breathe in freedom with each breath of life I take loved and forgiven back with the living I'm just a sinner saved by grace. How could I boast of anything I've ever seen or done? How could I dare to claim as mine the victories God has won where would I be had God not brought me gently to this place I'm here to say I'm nothing but a sinner saved by grace I'm just a sinner saved by grace when I stood condemned to death he took my place now With each breath of life I take, loved and forgiven, back with the living, 
I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Thank you, Lord, for being patient with me. Thank you for a church that's patient with me. This day, Lord, as our, we go and we have fun with family and whatever it may be that we do, that we would remember that we're just a sinner saved by grace. Bless our fellowship today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You're dismissed.